Republicans have long maintained that their decades-long crusade against LGBTQ plus people isn't actually driven by hate, contrary to popular belief. Rather, they're fueled by their compassion for homosexuals and their desire to see them stop sinning. Also, they want to protect children and protect women's sports and women and traditional marriage. They just want to protect a lot of people, not gay people, but a lot of people, right? They never just really come out and say what they're really thinking that they hate us. But one lawmaker in Florida did just that because as LGBTQ Nation explains, State Representative Jeff Holcomb was speaking on Monday on the floor of the Florida House of Representatives about a bill to urge Congress to get rid of the woke social engineering and experimentation practices in the US military. Yeah, see, when I think about the military, my number one complaint is usually that they should stop droning brown people in other countries that didn't attack us. But for this individual, uh, this egghead right here, I mean, Jesus Christ, uh, he <laughs> he thinks that, you know, the wokeification of the military is uh, is bad. And he's going to try to make the case for that in this video that we're about to watch. But as you watch it, pay very close attention to the blonde lady in the background and listen very carefully because you are going to hear audible gasps as he admits what he does here, as he says the quiet part loud. He labeled as racist and discrimination without, an, without a response. ISIS, the Taliban, and Al-Qaeda, those are the folks who discriminate. We bombed a building in 2017 like we never usually do. We bombed it because they threw homosexuals off that building. Our terrorist enemies hate homosexuals more than we do. They're the ones who discriminate. Our job in the military, our Navy creed. I am committed to excellence and fair treatment of all. That's what we learn in boot camp. That's what we drill into ourselves each and every day while we're in boot camp. Please vote up on this bill. Thank you. Time having expired. Representative Gregory, you're recognized to close on your memorial. Yeah. So needless to say, he made a little bit of an oopsie. <laughs> you're not supposed to just outright admit that you hate gay people. You're supposed to hide the ball and cloak your true feelings by concern trolling about tangential issues that aren't actually related to gay rights or trans rights. So um, it's just, it's hilarious to see him say this because as he said it, you can kind of tell that he's like, oh, I'm not supposed to give away the game here. But he just kept going because once you say it, you know, you can't really put the cat back in the bag. But I mean, nobody who's watching this is surprised that Republicans hate gay people. But like the disingenuity has been like the hallmark of their hate crusade against gay people. So for him to just say, yeah, we hate gay people, but, you know, terrorist groups, they hate gay people more because, you know, they threw them off buildings. So at least we're not killing gay people. Aren't we merciful? Yeah, very merciful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, for additional context, LGBTQ Nation explains, Halcom was speaking about Florida SM 1382, which would have the state of Florida send copies of a text to President Joe Biden and other federal officials demanding that the military stop engaging in, quote, woke social engineering and experimentation practices. This is so fucking stupid. <laughs> the bill cites the military's opposition to racism in the workplace and the facts that openly gay and bisexual men and women have been allowed to serve in the military and quote the ban on transgender individuals serving in the military was lifted as examples of woke military policies i'm sorry but aren't you the folks who argue that combat readiness was really important and distractions should be something that are minimized i mean isn't racism a bit of a distraction isn't that going to kind of destroy relationships in the military when we need them to be cohesive i mean uh, this is what you all argue right but no it's bad now to say hey gays can serve openly now we're not kicking them out for being gay we're no longer doing trans witch hunts and um because of that they're woke now, more about Florida. His speech comes after years of attacks on LGBTQ plus people's rights from the Florida state legislature, including the state's infamous Don't Say Gay bill, its ban on transgender students participating in school sports, and its most recent bill to allow doctors to refuse care for LGBTQ plus people. So states like Florida, they propose and pass so many anti-LGBTQ plus laws that it's hard to keep up with them. So only a fool would think that they don't hate LGBTQ plus people. But it's just so interesting to me that 
they're just saying the quiet part loud, even if it was a Freudian slip. For them to say it, to hear them say that they hate gay people, that is um, very entertaining. And I like that they're doing that because I think that that helps us because they're just kind of exposing themselves. We want them to not hide the ball. I want them to be more explicit because that turns off the normies. But even when they don't explicitly say what that dipshit said, it's clear that they hate us and it's getting increasingly hard for them to hide that fact. Not just in Florida, by the way, because last week, Alex Bollinger of LGBTQ Nation reported about Kansas. Quote, Kansas Republicans enacted one of the most regressive bathroom bills in the nation after the state legislature overrode Governor Laura Kelly's veto, leading Kansas House of Representatives Speaker Dan Hawkins to proclaim himself, quote, just giddy. Quote, getting that Women's Bill of Rights was truly the the icing on the cake, Hawkins said, after the body voted 84 to 41, mostly along party lines, to override Kelly's veto. The state Senate voted 28 to 12 to override her veto. So the cruelty is the point for those unaware. And their disingenuity is just crystal clear because this same party who is stripping away women's rights, women's reproductive health care, they're passing bills under the pretense of protecting women. It's just, it's comical at this point. And if you're a trans person or LGBTQ plus person who's watching this, I know that it's easy to feel bogged down by all of these stories because it just feels like everybody hates you. And it's easy to feel that way when the bigots are much louder than ever before, you know, and there's a lot of bigots with power passing law after law restricting your rights. By the way, we're up to 471 anti-LGBTQ plus bills introduced in 2023 alone with more to come for sure. But I mean, overall, understand that despite all of this noise, society is changing, even if it doesn't feel like it. Because remember, just because the biggest bigots also happen to be the loudest people, that doesn't actually mean that they represent the majority. Let me tell you what I mean. A new morning consult poll finds that after weeks and weeks of right-wing hysteria over Bud Light's partnership with a trans woman, a majority, I repeat, a majority of beer drinkers actually feel very or somewhat favorable about companies that hire trans spokespeople with 19% of Americans not really knowing or caring about the situation. And just 28% of people are mad about it. And a plurality of Americans, by the way, also support trans inclusion with regard to other industries. That includes 50% in beauty marketing, 51% in entertainment, that's a majority, 49% in pharmaceutical commercials, and 46% in auto. And all of these numbers are only going to improve for LGBTQ plus people since younger generations are substantially more supportive of inclusion than older generations and younger people are the future. My point is that as much as we all fixate on anti-LGBTQ plus hate, myself included, and as depressed as that may make us feel, I mean, it gets me bogged down as well. I cover this shit all the time on the show. One day, make no mistake about it, all of us are going to look back at this very moment and we're gonna tell our grandchildren or younger people that we know how bad it was, and they're not gonna believe us. And the reason why they're not gonna believe us is because society by that point will change, and this level of hate will be unfathomable to them because there will be so much change ushered in by younger generations. And that's not just wishful thinking, because you all know I'm no fucking optimist, but that future is one that we can expect because of demographic changes, and more importantly, data. So as bad as it seems now, and as loud and hateful as these bigots are, make no mistake about it, this is all temporary. That's not to say that racism is going to end, and homophobia and transphobia will go away. This is going to be a battle for the entirety of humanity's existence, but it is going to get better. And that's one thing that we can all look forward to.